What's up guys, this is Lois Jin, today I'm going to be showing you which modifications to prioritise in Forza Horizon 5. So, starting off, this is for road racing by the way, starting off we're going to start with conversion. So, for this you have engine swaps. Now, these are often not necessary unless you want to get a higher PI class. Normally the stock engine it can get you the best like competitive performance, only really pick another engine if you're trying to put if you're ever trying to push it into a higher PI class or there's just an engine you prefer the performance of. Sometimes uh, some engines can be more useful like for rally you might want to use a rally engine or a or a rotary engine possibly and then for some other aspects like drifting you might want to use a higher revving engine stuff like that. Anyway, you then got drivetrain swap. Now, I often do not recommend this unless your car's got so much horsepower it's undrivable in the stock configuration. So, the thing is with rear wheel drive is it can oversteer a lot, so if you have a lot of horsepower it can be quite hard to control. But often swapping in all wheel drive can cause a lot of problems which are hard to fix in tuning because your car's geometry, downforce and suspension are really not are often not designed to um fit a different kind of drivetrain so I often wouldn't go for that, also all wheel drive can add a lot of weight I don't really go for that if you really want to go on that complete competitive advantage because to be fair all wheel drive does do a lot better in online racing now as for aero and appearance, your front bumper you can add a, uh, a sort of, uh, I think they're called canards and a splitter so for this, when you add this, it can often add quite a lot of PI, but it can reduce understeer, so I often add this. Though I wouldn't add this on a lower performance car, like a maybe C-Class or D-Class, because you won't really notice the difference, because the car can't get up to enough speed for the downforce to take effect. So any understeer would have to be tuned out in your suspension. As you move on to the wing, you've got often got a Forza wing, and then no wing, and then some have like other brands of wing. I just pick any adjustable wing, and honestly, wings can often actually reduce the PI of your car. So I'd almost always pick them, because they can really help, especially on rear-wheel drive. As for tyres and rims, you can obviously space it out. I always just do this, because one... Spacing your tyres out can slightly improve your handling and also just looks a lot better because a lot of cars have the wheels slightly tucked in whereas completely flush fitment I personally believe looks better. Now moving on to your tyre compound, you've got the street, sport, race, all that tyres. You need to be able to be at a point where your tyres are heating up at the right point so there's no point putting race tyres on a say D class car or C class car because it can't heat the tyres up enough. So just select the relevant tyres based on whether you can heat them up. Obviously you need drag tyres for drag, drift tyres for... That's sort of those aren't drag tyres, those are slick race tyres. Wouldn't use those. They're often too much PI and they're only ever useful in dry. So you've also got drift tyres, off-road tyres, off-road race tyres. Now these are really self-explanatory. You should just pick the one for the discipline you're trying. So obviously if you're drifting, pick drift tyres. If you're doing rally, pick rally tyres. If you're doing off-roading, pick off-road tyres. Um, now, for some reason, the, off -road, the rally tyres are called off-road tyres, I don't know why. Uh, snow tyres are only ever really useful in the snow, so that's not really relevant at the moment. Might be a bit more relevant in the winter. And drag tyres are obviously for drag strips, Don't probably don't use them for other things. There are a few meta builds where drag tyres can be useful, but I don't know if they're still present in Forza Horizon 5. Anyway, reducing weight from your wheels can be good because they're rolling weight, they're unsprung rolling weight, so this can help with acceleration. I prioritise this over basic weight reduction. Now front tyre width uh, can often be quite PI expensive, though it does reduce understeer. I often just upgrade it because I really don't like understeer. Um, rear can be really useful, especially if your car's rear wheel drive. Now the general priority I'd say is whichever wheel drive your car is, you'd upgrade those wheels. So if your car's front wheel drive, you want to upgrade your front wheels. If your car's rear wheel drive, you want to upgrade your rear wheels. But if your car's all-wheel drive, you generally just want to increase grip in general. So going on to your drivetrain, you've got your gearbox. Now you can select as many gears as you need. I'd say you only select enough to stay within your power band. So if you've got a car with a very, very short power band, you might need more gears. Uh, differential, you should probably pick the relevant differential, though it doesn't really matter, as whatever you do with the differential, you then tune anyway, so you may as well tune a di choose a differential, which is designed for the sort of thing you're doing, and then you can just tune whatever you want with it. Now, I find a lot of cars that have a rally diff, so you can either just pick race or off-road or whatever you want, and then just tune it. It doesn't really matter, it's just kind of a baseline. 
So often there'll be a clutch and driveline upgrade. Driveline should again be prioritized over weight reduction because it's a um, rolling part. Any rolling part which is lighter can help a lot. But the thing is, is uh, I'm not actually sure if that makes a difference in Forza Horizon with the um, what's it called drive shaft. But anyway, I prioritize it still. Could often be a good way of just adding a little bit once you're at like the maximum PI of just adding a little bit more performance. So as for clutch, upgrade that unless you play manual with clutch. If you play manual with clutch, there's no point upgrading your clutch because your clutching or manual of clutch depends on how quickly you can use your own clutch. Anyway, moving on to performance and handling. Some cars have brakes, this one doesn't. You should only choose, you should go as high with brakes as necessary for the wheels to lock up easily. If your car is rolling for a long distance before the wheels lock up, you need to choose better brakes. Now, as for suspension, I'd always pick race suspension if, because this allows you to adjust your spring damper and alignment. I'd always pick that if you're going to, um, if you're going to, if you're going to, like use any I'd honestly always uh, I don't know what I'm talking about I'd honestly always choose this as for off-road obviously use that for off-roading and as for always use this one for drift mainly because it allows your wheels to come up further but as we're talking mainly just about on-road tuning I'd always pick race um, springs and dampers because you can uh, adjust it Anyway, as for anti-roll bars, I'd always put race ones on so you can adjust them again. The more adjusting you're able to do, the way better you can get your car. Now, chassis reinforcement, I'd only pick this if you're going up a PI class. So, if, say, for every uh, 60 to 100 PI you go up, you might want to add one step forward in chassis reinforcement because this can help a lot with... Uh, otherwise, your chassis can be quite flexible and it can stop your suspension and stuff working as well. So, as for weight reduction... You've got obviously your sport weight reduction, your weight, uh, your race weight reduction. So normally what I'd go for is race, uh, unless you're making a completely sprint focused car, you don't re the weight reduction doesn't matter as much because you have a lot of downforce uh, and you never really turn a corner quickly enough for the inertia of your car to push it too far to the side compared to your downforce. I don't know if I'm really explaining this well, but you kind of should understand what I mean. Now this can also really massively aid acceleration. So, again, for a circuit-oriented car, I'd always choose to maximise your weight reduction over your power. Now, moving on to engine upgrades. Um, normally, I'd often go for the camshaft first, if you can, because this increases your power band, uh, which allows you to use less gears and it generally, makes, uh, generally adds a lot of horsepower. Uh, it does, doesn't reduce any weight, which is... A bit of a downside but something like your exhaust is really important because it does it adds a lot of power and it reduces a lot of weight it also makes your car sound a lot better uh intake you can upgrade if you want better sound but i wouldn't prioritize it over your fuel system this is what i generally so not your fuel system or intake manifold uh so stuff like ignition i generally go for last as it doesn't save any weight it just very slightly increases your power uh, turbos, I'd also upgrade last. However, if you're supercharged your car, you might as well upgrade your superchargers because they actually make more of a difference. As for these, honestly, most of the time I will not decide to do these because they add a lot of weight. They do add power, but they add a lot of weight. So if you're doing a sprint-focused car, you might as well check this on because it's a good way of getting a lot of power for not very much of a PI cost, but they do weigh your car down. Oil and cooling is almost never justified it has a lot a lot of weight for very very little power gain so i wouldn't normally go for that flywheel i'd often use that right at the end it can make your engine have less inertia so this basically makes it a little bit more responsive and it can honestly just make the car more fun to drive um then obviously just upgrade this to the type to your desired horsepower now one thing i didn't go over is in conversions if you're picking uh a uh, aspiration swap often you shouldn't need to unless your um what was i going to say unless your car is trying to be pushed to over a pi class it can't live out so nat naturally aspirated or turbocharged whatever your car comes stock with is generally the best one you can go for for uh performance but you might want to upgrade it a little bit to a different uh aspiration if you want to push it much higher now i generally wouldn't recommend pushing cars too high out, out of pi classes i wouldn't recommend making a d-class car s1 unless you're trying to have a bit of fun because 
they're not just they're just not they're just not going to be competitive in higher classes normally. Now, the last thing I'm going to go over is wide bodies. I always pick the wide body one just because it looks really good, and two because it massively improves your handling. So that's what I'm going to say today. This video wasn't the cleanest. I'll give it that. Like I made a few mistakes, but there's no cuts. Um, and I'm just freestyling. I haven't got a script or anything. So I hope my uh, delivery is getting better. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.